Okay, the annual net cash flow on this deal is 33,200. Projected annual gross return is 56,000 and uh, it's an infinite ROI. But we can get all our money out uh, plus an extra 75,000. So this gives us an infinite return on investment. Please put your hands together and welcome Andrea Wilson. Thank you. Hi. Thank you. Um, oh, I'm very, very excited and a little bit nervous to be up here. Um, so here we go. Um, so my background uh, was not, not corporate at all. I worked on these amazing super yachts for years and years and travelled the world. Um, I met my husband on a yacht. He's a chef, Australian. And we had the most amazing time traveling in the Med, the Caribbean, South America, all over. It was fantastic. And in fact, during this time, we actually bought some houses. Um, I think it was the fact that I needed a home instead of a boat. Um, we ended up buying a house in Australia, which we owned for two years. Uh, that's where my husband's from. We didn't even go in it. We didn't rent it out. <laughs> we did nothing with it. <laughs> then we sold it. Um, after that, we bought some land in South Africa on a bit of a whim. <laughs> Didn't do anything with that either. <laughs> and uh, eventually we bought uh, an apartment in the south of France in Cannes and it meant I had a little place to go when we weren't on a yacht and I loved it. Um, it would make a really great essay now. We don't have that anymore. <laughs> um, I wish I knew then what I know now and um, it's been an incredible year. I've learned so much. Um, so here's my why. Um, these guys, my family, and uh, my husband still works on a damn yacht. Uh, so the reason why I'm doing this is to get my family back together. He's away for six months of the year. He's on a 2-2 rotation, uh, which means that he comes home for two months, and then he's off for two months. Um, so we want to get our family back together and this is a great way to do it. Um, my next why is I really love houses. I love property, I always have. I'm like one of those right move people that sits there every night looking at houses. Um, so this isn't a, a way for me to do something else. Actually property is my passion and my love. Um, and then the third reason why is uh, financial freedom and security. Again, going back to my family. Um, so, my first case study I want to show is in beautiful Dartmouth. Um, Dartmouth is 30 minutes from my home. It's lovely. Uh, it's in South Devon and it's perfect uh, for Airbnb. And uh, it's, it's a great place for families to come on holiday, weekend breaks, out of season. It's, it's nice. Um, and there are great potential returns. So, this is my first little beauty. Uh, it's Victorian Terrace. Um, now this I found on Right Move, of course. Uh, it was for sale at auction with a guide of 250,000. I looked at it, um, saw the potential, and went straight to the agent and offered uh, 268,000. Um, but my offer was prior to auction. I didn't, I didn't want to go to auction. Um, I've learned along this journey that only fools actually buy in the auction room, and I knew I'd be one of those people. So um, I put the offer in, and the agent told me, no. They said, too many people after this property, not a chance. So I went home, I was a bit disheartened. Oh, it's, it's, uh, not that I'm a motivated buyer, of course, but it was one that I really saw potential in. Um, I then spoke to my coach, Jo, who just really helped me here because she said to me, well, listen, what the, what's the problem? Why are they going to auction? What, what's, what's their reasoning? So I went back and I um, looked at their reasons. Now, the reason was, was the, the gentleman that owned the house had passed away. He was 101. And he had lived in this property for 89 years. His son was selling it. He was in his 80s. 
he didn't want the hassle. He just wanted that, you know, it was too hard. He wanted it gone. He wanted it a quick, quick sale. So I went back and um, I put another offer in and I purchased it before auction. Um, I, I said that we'd exchanged, we would exchange before the auction date and we would complete within auction terms. I did that in May and blimey, there were so many bank holidays in May. The solicitor was on holiday for a week, my broker was on holiday for a week. So it was, it was quite hard to, to get it um, through with bridging. That was an experience, but we did. Um, so it was a full back to brick renovation, uh, including a new roof, which uh, initially didn't, didn't realize and uh, lots of steel in the downstairs. We opened up the whole downstairs into a, a beautiful space. Um, so we've turned this into a three bed, uh, from a three bed into a four bed. Here are a few of the original features. Uh, we're not keeping that loo. <laughs> <laughs> and here's me in my element. I absolutely love this part. Um, I love coordinating with the builders um, and looking at what we're, get, what we're gonna do. And uh, here's the vision. So this is what we, it's going to become. It's got to be high end. Um, we're competing with a lot of people um, that have beautiful homes in Dartmouth. So I'm really excited about this property. Um, so the numbers, here we go. Uh, purchase for 275 plus the costs. Renovation, well, we originally budgeted 120, but with the new roof and all the steel, um, it's, it's 160. And our GDV is between 670 and 695. So I'm super happy with this. Uh, we're going to refinance to get all our money out, plus an extra 85,000. Projected annual gross return is 56,000. And uh, it's an infinite ROI. Um, annual net cash flow is 22,000 on this property. So then. Um, the next property is a property that I've been working on for what feels like forever. Um, it's a property in Plymouth. Um, now, this, I put conditional purchase under auction terms in on this property in December of last year. Originally, again, I saw it on right move. Um, it was on the market at 475, going to auction, didn't bother looking at it. it then was reduced to 425. Um, I went and had a look. The offer that I put in um, was 350, and it was a conditional offer. So we paid our auction fees, which secured it, and the condition was that we achieved a 13 bed HMO out of this property. Oh, here we go. Um, so this was purchased from a housing association in Plymouth. Uh, it's in an Article 4 area. And at the moment, it's 10 bed. It's going to be a 13 bed HMO. It's 100 meters from the Tain station, and all the other properties on this street are HMOs. Uh, this is the plans. Um, essentially, we're, we're making it into 13 ensuite bedrooms, really lovely, big um, living space, uh, cinema room, great courtyard. Um, so currently, it's got planning a C2. Uh, but it has been used as an HMO for 10 years. We went in with a planning change to use 13-bed um, HMO, and this was refused. At this point, I thought, oh, my God, OK, well, we'll just walk away. And um, we haven't, uh, because we're currently now working with the Housing Association and the Council to obtain a Certificate of Lawful Use. Um, they're getting everything together. We have to prove that it's been used as an HMO for 10 years. Okay, so the numbers on this one, as I said, it was conditional offer, uh, 350. Conversion cost for an HMO is 250. Um, commercial valuation at the end is 900. Projected annual gross return is 93,600. And again, we can use, uh, we can get all our money out uh, plus an extra 75,000. So this gives us an infinite return on investment. Um, annual net cash flow on this particular deal is 34,200. Now we've got a plan B. Now, it's, 
although we are working towards the HMO and the Certificate of Lawful Use, you never know. Um, so I went back to the Housing Association and put in a Plan B offer, which again is a conditional offer, except it's £100,000 less. And they've said, if, if we don't achieve the HMO, we'll do this. Um, so this is to then convert the property into six apartments, four two-bed and two one-bed apartments. The conversion cost is slightly more, it's 300,000. And uh, the GDV, once we title split, is 760,000. Projected gross annual return is 61,200. We're gonna refinance, get all our money out, plus an extra 20,000, which gives us an infinite ROI. Okay, the annual net cash flow on this deal is 33,200. Okay, so here's the summary of the two deal, or the, our two deals. Um, still not enough to quite get my husband home, but we're on our way. Um, key learnings is, my first one is always have a backup plan. Um, I think the, the property in Plymouth has taught me so much and being able to work with the Housing Association to make you know, a second plan that will work for both of us is, is brilliant. Um, the other one is finance. Finance isn't easy, bridging isn't easy, private loans, it's all quite stressful. Um, so make sure you find a great broker. I've got a lovely broker who's literally held my hand all the way through this. Um, find a builder that you trust and get on with. Mine's really good. Um, but I do think what got you here won't get you there, so I'm going to be using someone else for the property in Plymouth because this guy won't be able to do it. Um, tell everyone what you do. My main investor is someone I worked with on a yacht um, over 10 years ago. And think outside the box. Keep moving forward. Baby steps will get you where you want to be. Thank you. Congratulations, well done. Wow, what an amazing story, right? And, you know, a couple of really important key points that I want to pull out. I hope you got lots from that. I hope you picked up lots of things. First of all, always have a backup plan, right? Things go wrong in property sometimes. So if our plan A doesn't work, let's have a plan B that we can use instead to make sure we still make lots of money. And these deals, you know, we like the idea of finding a deal. We can add value to it. We then increase the value so we can refinance. We call momentum investing or BRRR. And very often, you have to leave some money in, which is still okay deal. But if you can get all your money out and take extra money out as well, it's like you're kind of getting paid to acquire a property. Who likes the sound of that? And then again, a massive cash flow left over just goes to show these deals are out there, but you know, you need to work for them. You need to, you need to work hard. Property is not easy, you need to overcome the challenges, but it's about having that, um, the ability to just keep going and plugging into the network, get support from the community here and also coaches. Let's have another round of applause for Andrea, please. Well done, Andrea. Thanks so much for sharing. Hey, it's Simon here. I do hope you enjoyed that last YouTube video. And I've got a recommendation for you. If you got value from that and you want to learn more, I've actually got a recording of a live training which I did a while ago and I want to give you access to the recording. So if you click on the link below this video, you'll be able to go and register and pick a time that suits you to watch the recording of this live training which will go much deeper than I've had time to do in this YouTube video. I know it's going to help you become a more successful investor. So click on the link below, register the time that works for you and enjoy the recording of the live training. Invest with knowledge, invest with skill. See you in the next video.